may take our seats. Your Excellency, the President of this great nation, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, the two chairs of the NADCO, National, um, National Dialogue Committee, the members, Your Excellency, with your permission, at this point, allow me to invite one of the co-chairs, Honorable Kimani Shungwa, to take over the program. Your Excellency, the President and the Deputy President, Your Excellency, allow me to begin with uh, introducing these members because I'm told there's only one mic. I'll just introduce them on this side, and when I invite uh, the Honorable Kalonzo Masioka, you'll invite the team on the other side. Uh, our Deputy Leader of Delegation was Cecil Mbarire, who is in Embu, was not able to make it. Uh, Senator Aaron, our leader of majority in the Senate, was part of our team. Mweshimiwa Catherine Wambilianga was part of our team. Mweshimiwa Omar Hassan, who claims he represents 350 million East Africans, was part of the team. <clears throat> our lead, uh, t uh, the team of uh, our experts, or our committee experts, were led by uh, Advocate Budomi Viancolu assisted by Biketi and uh, Dr. Duncan Ojuang and Linda Musumba, who also has an apology. She had traveled to Kunda. Uh, Mr. Abisai, uh, Senate is? Josephine yes, Kusini from the Senate as part of the Secretariat from Parliament. Jemaima Waigua, also part of the Secretariat, and they were led by Nicholas Emigen. And that was the Secretariat that was serving us from the National Assembly. Uh, I think the other side I will ask uh, the Honorable Kalonzo Musioka to introduce once I'm done. <clears throat> Your Excellency, this afternoon we had occasion to visit the former Prime Minister at his Capitol Hill offices and we have officially handed over the work that yourself and him did task this team to do. And Your Excellency, as we have mentioned there, we had a difficult start at the beginning but uh, all these members of this team were quite magnanimous in the engagements that we got into. And uh, amidst all the difficulties that we had at the beginning, even not being able to agree on a common agenda, we were able to put together all the agendas that were brought by both teams and uh, reduce them to five thematic areas that we handled and were able to agree on almost 90% of the issues that were before us. The few issues that we could not agree on, we like the cost of living, the Azimio team had their views, we had our very strong views on that issue, and we agreed they would give us an opportunity to do what we are supposed to do as government, or as administration charged with the responsibility of dealing with the cost of living, as we also give them the opportunity to continuously critique what we are doing, and I believe they have been doing that and they will continue doing that. Your Excellency, there are a few other issues that we could not agree on, and we decided that we will refer those to yourself and the former Prime Minister, and uh, you will see them contained in the report, the issues that you should consult between you and the former Prime Minister, and we believe you also uh, endeavor to settle on those outstanding issues. We have since tabled the report in both houses. It's now formally adopted by both houses. We have begun the work of implementation. We have already published two bills the bill on IEBC to re-establish the panel for selection of the IBC commissioners and a bill on ESEC. Those are already published and uh, we reduced the publication timeline for the IEBC one to one day and I believe the JLA committee uh, in both houses will begin work on it to start public participation and process the bills. Uh, Your Excellency, finally, um, amidst all the challenges I say that we had we also had lessons that we learned that there is no challenge that is not surmountable when people speak to each other. We have been uh, reminded by the former Prime Minister that we must never forget what brought us to NADCO and how we got there. And we must honor those who lost their lives, those who lost their businesses and property in this country by ensuring that we fulfill what we have agreed on. That that uh, is going to be achieved through legislative uh, interventions. Myself, the Honorable Pio and I, the Honorable Aaron uh, Cheruyot, 
and uh, Justice Mazzayo, we will work hard to ensure that Parliament as an institution uh, works towards the fulfillment of what we ought to do as Parliament. With those many remarks, Your Excellency, allow me now to invite my co-chair and the leader of the Azimio delegation to invite his team and make his remarks. Dear Excellency and dear brother, um, my colleagues, uh, Kimani, Kimani, allow us to have some light moments. This, this is a radical, <laughs> but he's now a refined diplomat. <laughs> it's a process of uh, this dialogue. We are honored that you found time to see us, and we, can, we are here to make a presentation. We are very happy to do so. Because as we make this presentation, we, are, we realize it is not just to William Ruto or Raila Odinga, but it's something for our country. But before I continue, our team here, you know everybody. You know a head of state knows everybody, even those <laughs> who, do, who think that he doesn't know them. So Opio Andai, a leader of a minority, and also so deputizing our side. And you know, Senator Omgen uh, Nyamira is a senior counsel. So for me, as far as I'm concerned in this group, I don't think of another learned brother. <laughs> uh, so that is uh, Omgeni. Uh, Amina has just prayed for us. She's from all the way from the coast in Kilifi. Sorry, Malindi. Malindi, member for Malindi. Uh, and ahead of our technical team was uh, Moshima Jeremiah Kioni, a whom you know very well. And uh, we had technical teams here, Adam Zolo, uh, Abu Bakar Zain, and uh, we have that lady who works, uh, Wangechi, works with the Wandai, and she was in our team, communications. Um, have I left out anybody else? We have apologies of Honorable Eugene, Wamaloa, and also, no, just Eugene, actually, because Amina was not with us when we met Raila um, several minutes ago, I think about two hours ago. So she, I think she wanted to come and meet the president first <laughs> before she sees on about Raila. So we are very honored. And as Kimania said, uh, it took us quite a while. First of all, to develop goodwill was not easy. And we, some of us nearly got killed during those demonstrations. And you know, you have the brief. So we were very angry. Oh, I saw Kimani, I saw this man, noisy fellow from <laughs> Kikuyu. <laughs> so, but at the end of it, and I must tell you, the diplomat in our team is Aaron. I can tell you that Aaron, I removed my heart. When the issues were very difficult, Aaron would come in and give us a way forward. Uh, the technical team did exceedingly well. Um, we had hard positions. <laughs> I reserve my comments. <laughs> I reserve my comments. Those were the moments. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. You know, you see, you have been following. I told you, you can't hide anything from my head of state. So um, today we are very happy to come before you and uh, Deputy President to um, make this presentation. You know, one of the things we had great difficulty with was um, they kept on saying, His Excellency the President. We were very angry with them. Who gave you authority? That's an issue for discussion. That's how we started these things. Very hard things. But at the end of it, now I think after today, when you meet your brother, Raila Odinga will call you Your Excellency, Excellency William Samoya Rapruto, because of this work. Uh, and, and, and no hang ups, uh, and yet the work that lies ahead is equally important. Our recommendation is because this is a negotiated document, negotiated. Therefore, we plead with you that. Um, and the Kenya Kwanzaa teams in Parliament, in both houses of Parliament, be adequately guided so that we can have a fast-tracked process in order to settle this country. 
to be able to do the next important things. And therefore, I had Kimani even here refer, he didn't talk when we were in, with Raila, he did not talk about uh, uh, public participation. <laughs> And the reason is, remember, you remember, Kemani, one of the things we said, we must have these stakeholders. We don't want to be accused of not having had public participation. This doctrine is written in black and white in our constitution. Therefore, even if you have to do uh, public participation of the bills, the consequent bills upon the report, which has happily been adopted, we want to suggest that we do not take all the time. You can do public participation, and then you get a lot of problems coming out of it. So fast tracking it and then, and then getting the final product. We all know, for example, we do not have an IBC. The other day I went to take part in elections to, for the Law Society of Kenya. And you know, I saw people wearing IBC things. I looked at them, I said, if I was a contestant, I would take this matter to cause them. There is no IBC. But they went on. These were lawyers who should know. Um, so we don't have an eye. So the people of Banisa have every reason to feel aggrieved. But then I think we are able, if we fast track this thing, because even the ruling that was made by some judge in this matter did not give the timelines. Aaron kept on, actually, it's like he knew some of these judges. Because you guys, you know, there's this thing in court. But now we are able to move with speed. And, and implement this. So we want to urge again fast tracking and also having it as it is because it's a negotiated product. We have uh, precedents highlighting I mean, this position. And it's not like we, we're in a hurry to, to force any situation. You know it better. This is your country. And your brother, Ray Lauringa, is equally uh, committed to this process. There will be forces, as expected, within the coalitions and outside, within parliament and outside, who may not like to have a peaceful country and therefore may want to derail even what we have come up with. We want to ask that you use the authority given to you uh, by law to push this thing through. Um, I think that is what I want to say. The five agenda items are highlighted in the document and uh, I think we can now happily present the product to you. I don't know whether anybody has it. Uh, Amgen. Um, we, Amgen, Amgen, I was very suspicious sometimes about Amgen, uh, but now he's a good guy. Uh, <laughs> I had to send Jeremiah Kioni to look thrice at every sentence. Uh, very good in editing. And uh, I can tell you, we would not have even come to you if it was not for the fact we had very competent, competent technical team. Uh, that Mudomi, uh, I cannot pronounce the other name, I just call him Mudomi. It's a Dharaka name, uh, Vionkori. I never heard of the name, he's from my neighborhood, but that is, he did very well along with uh, Zain here and Professor Adams. From here, Your Excellency, just proceed. Just give us a final product. And, and the country will settle. And uh, as I said, the difficult issues, they, you, as we speak here, their family is mourning. Uh, we could not even get a place to hold a, a prayer service for the, for the killed, uh, for the young men who lost their lives. And, and they had to come up to my secretariat. We pretended we can have a church service there because the churches there would not touch us, right? And, and of course, the issue of Kimen was very eloquent on, on uh, stolen, I mean, destroyed property and reparations. So you may have to think of a commission between you and your brother and see how best we can actually deal with this matter of grieving Kenyans. Grieving, they don't understand what happened. Uh, all they know is they lost their loved ones. And so uh, that's a matter you consult. Uh, principle of concurrence, uh, discussion, concurrence, I'm sure is not a difficult one. But then, finally, Kimani Chungo was very kind to Raila. He actually announced to him, and I believe he was doing it, repeating <laughs> what he already knows, that uh, President William Ruto is campaigning for Raila to become the AU chairperson. This is a matter that puts all of us together as a country. And we are very proud of that situation. And so, without much ado, 
Can we now move to the next thing, Pio? Yeah. Thank you. I think you can make your comments after we give you the document. We, Your Excellency, you allow us to hand over the report. Then I will invite the Deputy President. We, we cannot invite you to speak when the Deputy President is here. We will ask him to make brief remarks, then invite you after we hand over the report. So, Your Excellency, that is the report, and you have a look at it. And now it's my pleasure to invite the Deputy President to make brief remarks, then invite you to speak. Your Excellency, our President, Dr. William Ruto, Your Excellency, former Vice President, Carlos Musioka, and members of the two teams that have been trying to come up with a document to put our country on a peaceful trajectory. Let me take this opportunity to really thank the two teams for your pragmatism, for your patience, and for the hours that you have spent to come up with a document that will bring peace and tranquility to our country. Your Excellency, I must admit that uh, I was a bit skeptical from the beginning whether these discussions will see the light of the day. I must admit, uh, I had underestimated the resilience of the Kenyan people to look for peace and tranquility. And I have since been very impressed by what has happened. And I think this is the way to go. Kenya is bigger than all of us. And we, in the executive and our president, are very happy to have a peaceful environment because we have a plan and a mandate with the people of Kenya that would like to execute and implement in a peaceful environment. We are therefore very happy that uh, there is peace and tranquility in the country and going forward after the two houses have done justice to the report, we believe that uh, we'll have peace forever and never again shall we settle our political differences in the streets of Nairobi and other towns, through violence, through destruction of property, through shouting at each other, but rather talking to each other for the benefit uh, of the people of this great republic. With those very few remarks, it is now my humble duty to invite the President of the Republic of Kenya to make his remarks. Your Excellency. Congratulate you for first accepting to undertake this weighty responsibility that we put on your shoulders to discuss the issues that are of concern to all of us as a nation. And um, I am very happy. And I had no doubt in my mind 
having traveled this journey as a politician in Kenya for a long time, I had no doubt in my mind that this was an assignment that was doable. And I'm very proud that uh, we have finally, uh, we finally have a report and the report has already been adopted by both houses of parliament and we are now well on course to implementing it. Let me also take this opportunity to commend our former Prime Minister, the Honorable Raila Odinga, for the decision that we jointly made to make sure that we take the country on this path, the path of peace, of dialogue, consultation, conversation, that is what defines Kenya. Kenya is a country that is very well known and we have credentials as a country, as believers in democracy and that we can always use democratic means to resolve whatever issues that arise because as our democracy matures, we consistently have to look out for avenues Um, of proposals and we now have a joint proposal with our bill in Parliament. We also uh, have agreed on the issues of the other proposal that already in Parliament with a bill is ESCC. I hope you included uh, Mambo Matatu. <laughs> yeah. Okay, again, uh, let me also uh, congratulate you on finding an agreement on the constitutional provision that will make NGCDF a, a constitutional um, uh, imperative, so to speak, the oversight fund that uh, the Senate uh, will access, and also NGAF that will be uh, available to our women members of parliament. I am sure Wambilianga and uh, my sister here, Amina, will be happy when we finally make that uh, NGAF a, a, a constitutional um, uh, bill that will constitutionally provide for resources for our women members of parliament to discharge their responsibilities and to serve the people of Kenya appropriately. And as uh, Stephen has said, I am happy that the outstanding issue of two-thirds gender, finally, both sides have agreed on a way forward. I want to encourage all of us 
that this time round, I think we have an opportunity to make sure that we deliver on this constitutional imperative. Parliament is teething on a, prob a problematic area on the matter of two-thirds gender rule. So hopefully we will be able this time round, and I am very confident that this time round we will get it right, and the women of Kenya will take their place of leadership appropriately in the Republic of Kenya, because we are all the poorer if women have not taken up their position in the leadership of Kenya. Today, I think, is a very important day. We are celebrating International Women's Day. And as we do that, we are having this concurrence of um, minds on delivering on the two-third gender, uh, uh, gen uh, gender provision. So I hope in honor of all our girls, our daughters, our wives, our mothers, and all the women of Kenya, we will be able to do this uh, for us as a country. Let me also um, uh, congratulate all of you. I know that uh, when you have uh, constituencies, you know, when you represent people, you, you, it's difficult to carry everybody's view. And sometimes you get blamed for this or the other. But I am confident that uh, you have the fortitude, and the strength and commitment uh, to make sure that you did uh, the, right, uh, the right thing. So, um, members of this committee, members of the Secretariat, I want to give you my assurance that I will do the best I can to make sure that we deliver on the agreement that you have made. Um, it is not an agreement of one side versus the other. It is our collective position. And we will mobilize uh, members of parliament. We will mobilize uh, every, every um, aspect of what is required so that we can deliver on this um, commitment. Um, and uh, let me give my, my commitment that I will do the best I can. We all know, you know, the, the good thing is that all of us here are members of parliament, have been members of parliament, let me put it correctly, have been members of parliament. And you know how parliament operates. Even on bills that I went out with my Kenya Kwanzaa people, we went out, we told people, we are going to run a program called housing. So when it comes to passing the bill on housing, the people you were with on the platform now come again and say, Lakini sasa unajua, hiko maneno, hiko maneno. Then you ask them, but we promise the people. So those dynamics, we have to keep working at them. So um, I really want to ask Parliament this time around, because um, whenever I call a PG here, and uh, they, they really uh, take a lot of my time. I have to explain in, at length, many times, I have to repeat myself, for us to forge an agreement. I promise to do the same over this report. Uh, and I really want to persuade uh, our members of parliament from both sides of the house to uh, work towards uh, doing the best for, for Kenya. I ask also colleagues from the other side uh, to also mobilize their teams and uh, take time so that people understand why we are doing this. Because sometimes parliament pushes back and say they have a mind of their own and they tell us that they are an independent house 
and we should not give them lectures. And, and I run into that all the time. But I'm sure this time around, knowing the magnitude of what we want to do, I want to ask members of parliament to really consider um, working with us on this, uh, on this subject. Um, finally, um, let me uh, commit to you, as I commit to the nation, that we will continue to do our best as a country to forge unity, peace, and so that we can drive the progress of Kenya, which leaves no citizen, no community, no side behind, that we will all move uh, together. So um, thank you very much for the good job that you have done. Um, when finally the history of Kenya will be written, I am sure that if you will not have a chapter, you will not miss some paragraphs in, in some place that there were some good people who did a good job uh, for Kenya. But when finally I write mine, surely you'll have a chapter. <laughs> so, uh, so I want to say uh, thank you very much. I know um, my friend, uh, former Vice President, has said that um, it, it, uh, these good people have said that we are pushing the candidature of the former Prime Minister. And I said when I was in Parliament the other day with the East African Legislative Assembly that indeed we have agreed as leaders from the East African community because it is the turn for East African, the East African side of our continent to provide the leadership for um, AU. Uh, I have consulted with the leaders of our region and we have agreed to support the candidature of the Honorable Raila Odinga. And it is because, number one, he is Kenyan. Number two, we believe he has the stature and the wherewithal to handle the affairs of that office. And number three, as East Africans, we have agreed that we move together in that direction. So, um, uh, my friend uh, Stephen and the teams here, um, you remember, we all remember we pushed the candidature of Amina the last time. We, we did very well. She won the first round, but she didn't win the final round. And it is uh, another opportunity for us as a country to present a candidate from Kenya for the position of AU. This is not about political sides. This is about Kenya. And we must always remember that um, there, are, there is politics and we have a nation. And when there are issues that concern Kenya as a nation, we must close ranks as communities, as parties, as sides, so that we can all move together. In fact, we do not have as many Kenyans in international positions as we should. And we, we should change our strategy so that we can be able to um, get more Kenyans occupying positions in the international framework because
I guess it's. Um, so I, I was just making the point that uh, we have opportunities globally to present Kenyans for uh, global positions, and uh, we should exploit that opportunity, or continental ones uh, for that matter. So um, thank you very much, uh, good people. Um, uh, thank you, Stephen, for I am sure you have said uh, Kemani has become a dip, uh, has become you know measured now. He's he's less uh, frontal. I am sure he hung around you for a while, and uh, the uh, diplomacy around you may have uh, rubbed on him. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure we can all move uh, together. And then uh, my good friend. Uh, Mudomi Thionkulu there, who was the leader of our team. You have said correctly that uh, he's from Tharaka. And I thought you came from Tharaka. <laughs> and therefore, you shouldn't have a problem uh, with the <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, he's a good guy, yeah? OK, thank you very much. So otherwise, Asante Nisana. Uh, it is good to meet old friends, uh, Adam Solo there, uh, and uh, Zane, you know, we were together in the Constitutional Manenos, and so we've been on all sides in different times, and that is the nature of Kenyan politics. So, uh, otherwise, Pongezi Sana, I am truly grateful for this, and uh, I am sure we're going to move together as a people. Asante Sana, God bless you. Thank you, Your Excellency, with your permission, I request this.